guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making a space otter. I thought this would be a really fun project to work on. Plus, I wanted to try and do something that stretched. That was my idea. I wanted the body to go like really, really long and it didn't work. <laughs> But I'm still going to be making something very interesting. I'm actually going to be making it where the space otter has six limbs and you can slide them around on the length of the body. So it's still something very different and maybe we'll get back to doing a stretchy creature in the future. I just need to figure it out first. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so for the finished piece, I will be using resin pieces, but I don't have anything sculpted yet, so we need to make the clay pieces first so we can cast them. So let's get started on the clay head first. Now for the clay head, since I am going to be casting it and we're doing an otter, I figured let's not make the face too, like, alien. Let's try and make it as otter-like as possible so I can use it for future projects that aren't space-themed. So I have my tin foil covered in a thick layer of clay. I've got everything blended together and I'm going to start adding clay to try and make that chubby face that we need for our otter. I'm going for something really chubby and cute and it might have a little bit of a cartoon type style to it, but I still want to make it pretty realistic. Now when I got to the eyes, I kind of forgot that I'm casting this for a mold, so I ended up using the eyes that we're going to end up using with the finished face. Um, I could have just used plain glass pieces for this. I really didn't need to throw in the actual eyes because we're not going to be using this clay face at the end, so yeah. But at least you get to see how the eyes are going to look once we get the face done. Also, real quick, if you guys haven't seen it yet, these are eyes that I actually made myself and I made a video going over how I made them. So I'll leave that link down below in the description if you're curious on making your own eyes or anything like that. It was a lot of fun. Anyways, once I had the eyes placed, I ended up adding some clay around it to make the eyelids and just kind of building up the structure of the face a little bit more. And then once I was done with that, I moved on to the nose and the mouth. For making the nose, I'm going to add a lump of clay to the very end of the snout. I'm going to blend it in and then I'm going to use my tools to lay out the shape of the nostrils and shape everything. Now for my nose, I'm going a little bit larger than normal. Otters have pretty decent sized noses, but I want to kind of exaggerate it to give a little bit of a style to the face. I don't want to have it super realistic. I want to add just a little hint of detail that just makes it kind of unique. Once I'm done with nose, I'll move on to adding a strip of clay to lay out the shape of the mouth. I like doing the noses first and then moving to the mouth. I just find it a little bit easier. Sometimes it works to do it the other way around, but most of the time I just, I just prefer it this way. Now for the shape of the mouth, I'm going for just kind of something cute, slightly agape, and um, obviously just kind of friendly and happy and stuff. I'm going for a happy little space otter. Now one thing that I want to do with this piece is I want to add whiskers to it later. So what I'm going to do when I add the texture to the front of the face, I'm going to use my dotting tool and I'm going to mark out where I want to add those whiskers. I will probably have to drill holes for them later because I don't think these will cast correctly. I'm just going to mark where I want to drill them. Okay. 
And then I was debating on if I was going to have fabric ears or if I wanted to sculpt them, but I ended up deciding on sculpting the ears. They're just really cute and tiny, so I figured it'd be just easier to add them this way. Normally I do like felt ears, but felt like trying something a little different. Anyways, once I have my clay face finished, I'm going to end up baking this in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then while that is baking, we can start working on the clay feet. Now I'm also going to be casting the clay feet as well. I figured they'd be very useful to make casts of because we could use them for a bunch of different creatures. So while I'm sculpting them, I need to keep in mind that I need to have them sculpted in a way where we can avoid getting air bubbles when we cast the molds. So I'm going to start building up some clay at the end of a piece of wire. Main reason for this isn't because we're going to use the wire, I'm actually going to cut it off later. It's just so I have something to hold on to. So the front feet, they're going to be a little bit smaller than the back feet, so I'm going to have a little bit less clay for those ones. And our space otter is actually going to have six legs in total, four front ones and two back ones, but I don't need to make four for the front because we can just cast them a second time to make more. Also, I don't need to add any supporting wires to the claws when we add them because I don't really need the clay to survive longer than casting them in the silicone to make the molds. So I don't need to make these super strong right now, just strong enough to survive a few minutes. Anyways, I'm going to get our claws laid out and then I'm going to start adding clay to make the paw pads. Um, the paw pads for the front feet are going to be slightly different than the back feet. And I did reference off of the paw pads for an otter, but I did change it up just a little bit. So I'm going to finish up the clay work for the front and back feet. I'm going to get everything sculpted and then we can put these in the oven to bake as well. And they're just going to go in at the same time the head did, about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once we have all of our clay pieces done, I'm going to end up making some little um, cardboard like containers for them to go in so we can end up casting the molds. So I'm going to end up doing this and then I'm just going to pour the silicone and then we can end up casting everything in resin. Okay, so we have all of our resin pieces done and we're ready to paint. I also made sure to cast a second pair of the front legs since we're going to have the six limbs. And so the color of our otter isn't going to be the natural color that an otter is. We're going for something a lot more space themed. So I'm going to be going with a really cool kind of sherbet like green color and I'm going to try and match the fabric as best I can and I'm going to get all my resin pieces completely coated in this paint. So I'm just going to primer everything that sherbet color and then we can start adding some shadows and stuff and just kind of figuring out where all our detail are going to go. Now for adding the shadows, I'm pretty sure I've explained this before, but one thing that I've been recently doing is kind of watering down the paint that I use for the shadows. So normally I'll use a black and then I'll just kind of water it down so I can control how dark the shadows are. It's a lot easier than just using less paint. You can kind of blend it out and you can also wash it away really easily while it's still wet if you made it too dark or if you just got it in the wrong spot. Thank you. 
Once I'm done adding my shadows and everything has dried, one thing I've been doing lately also is using a heat gun to speed the process of this up and it's just amazing how fast my paint will dry with this. Highly recommend it. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight. So I'm just going to kind of brush over the face with a little bit of white paint to brighten it up a little bit. And then I want to mark out where I'm going to add some details. So I'm going to use one of my pencils and I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch on the face where I want to add some blue spots. That's going to be our secondary color for the body. The same blue that I'm using to make the markings on the face, I'm also going to use to go over the paw pads on all the feet. Now I do want to add some pink highlights, but I kind of want to control how bright they get and I don't want them to look too neon. I think they'll kind of compete too much with the green color. So what I'm going to do for the nose is I'm going to actually paint it more of a muddy brown color first and then I'm going to go over it and add a pink highlight to it. This will kind of like mute the pink a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural and uh, leave the green color more of the predominant color. And I actually liked how the muddy color kind of looked with the green, so I'm actually going to use this and paint the claws on all of the feet. And then lastly, to finish up the face, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more pink. I'm just going to lightly go around the eyes and the ears a little bit. And then I'm just going to let everything dry and then we can scrape away the paint that got on our glass eyes. Just kind of clean them up so we can actually see what they look like. Now, I'm not done painting yet. I actually have a few more resin pieces. I have a bunch of little resin claws that I'm going to be painting green and blue as well. Now, even though these are claws, they're not going to be used for the feet. We already finished those, obviously. But what I have in mind is to have these posable, like, back spikes coming out, kind of making a mane of hair for the otter. It sounds really weird, but once we get to it, we'll get to it. Again, space-themed, so it's going to be a bit weird. Anyways, I'm going to get these painted and then we're going to resin over all of our clay pieces. And then one thing I'm going to do with these claws is after I've resined them, I'm going to let it cure just a little bit. I want the resin sticky but not like dripping. And then I'm going to take some glitter and I'm going to coat them with it. I found that doing glitter this way is really useful because the resin kind of keeps majority of the glitter connected and it doesn't fall off like if you were to just glue it in place. So I'm going to leave all of our pieces to cure and while those are curing we can work on our sewing. So this is going to be our extremely long sewing pattern. It's, it's a bit intense. It's, it's pretty long. <laughs> Our creature is not going to actually be this long when it's done, but I need the fabric to be this long. So my first idea for this creature was I wanted our otter to be stretchy and you'll see that in a lot of the filming that I'm going to end up using elastic and everything and it just didn't work. So what I'm going to end up doing, the reason the body is so long, is I want to have the arms kind of slide up and down the length of the body so it kind of is like morphing a little bit. It'll make a lot more sense once we're done, but that's my goal. 
So while I'm sewing the body, I'll point out what things I ended up changing in the long run because they didn't work and I'll just kind of explain it as we go. So with the back legs, these ones are going to be already connected. So all I need to do is sew in place the inside portions and I'm just gonna sew down the front portion of them. And then for the front legs, these are not connected just yet. So I'm gonna take the inside and outside, sew down the front, and then I'm gonna connect these to the body. Now for making her otter stretch, because that was our original goal that we're changing, I thought adding a piece of elastic to a inside stuffed portion would be the best way to go. So what I ended up doing was making a really long kind of sock shape that's basically the same length as we had the body. And then I have the uh, elastic and I sewed it to the inside on one end and the other and I stuffed this tube. The main reason I thought this was a good idea was because I wanted the stuffing to hold its shape and I figured putting it inside of something inside of the body would keep it from like clumping up when you stretched the doll. Um, it didn't work. <laughs> So what I ended up doing was I shortened this tube a lot and I also removed the elastic. So the tube we're still going to use because it'll help the arms kind of slide around and we'll, you'll see what we do when we put it together. But basically this is going to go inside of the otter. I really did try so freaking hard to try and get this doll to be stretchy, but it just wasn't going to work. I think if I did something a lot smaller, it would probably work, but with how thick I made my otter, it wasn't going to be a thing. Okay, so I'm going to start putting our doll together. I'm going to start with our resin feet, and I'm going to start adding them to the fabric for the legs. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to glue the fabric around the bases of them. I'm going to let those dry for a little bit and then I'm going to take some wires and I'm going to add them because I want the arms and legs to be poseable even though the body won't. So I'm just going to glue these to the backs of each. I actually drilled holes ahead of time so that they could be connected. And then after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sewing the backs of the arms and legs closed and stuffing them. So I'm gonna get those all done so the legs are finished. And then we're gonna take our resin head and we're gonna start gluing it to the very end of where the neck would be. So I'm just gonna glue the fabric around the base of this along with the fabric for the belly. Now I'm going to take our little like stuffed sock thing and I'm going to connect it to the back of the head. I have some wires sticking out of the back of the head and I'm going to tie it to that. Now this I will still be doing so this is how I actually connected the tube to this. But again we shortened it and we removed the elastic part. Once I have that connected, I'm then going to take the body fabric and I'm going to start sewing it closed around our little stuffed sock. So normally, this is how I close up my body, except instead of having a stuffed sock, I normally will stuff the body as I go. So I'm just going to keep sewing until I get to the back legs, and then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to attach our little tube sock to the wires for the back legs. That way it's one solid connection. And again, uh, I did have to shorten this so it's still longer than it will be in the end. And 
for the tail, I figured it would be actually a lot easier to stuff and close up the rest of the body if I cut the underside of the tail off of the belly piece and sewed it in place first. That way we could stuff the tail separate from the rest of the body. So I'm going to get the tail sewn, I'm going to close up the body, and then we need to add our final details because you're probably still wondering what those little claws are for, so let's get to that. So my idea for our little claws is to have them at the end of these little like hair spikes. I'm going to actually be giving our otter kind of a mane of these poseable spikes. So I'm going to take our little claws, I've drilled holes into the backs of them, and I'm going to glue them to some wires. To make them more poseable and to hold their shape a little bit better, it's going to be easier if I have two on each wire. So we're basically going to bend the wires in half and have two of the uh, little quills. For the body of the quill, I just have a long strip of fabric, and I'm going to glue it around the base of our claw, and then we're just going to stuff and close up each of these quills. Now, honestly, this took so, so long. Um, I made over 20 quills. I can't remember the amount. I'll have to count them, but yeah, there's, there's definitely over 20 of them, and they took forever to sew. But once I got them sewn, I'm going to take a bit of blue fur fabric and I kind of made a guide of where I want each color to go and I'm going to start sewing them in place on this fabric. Just kind of connecting them into one like quill wig. <laughs> And then once I have our little wig done, we can start sewing it in place on the neck. So I'm going to connect it right behind the head and then going down the back of the neck. Another fun detail that I thought would be cool to add to our otter was a little bit more blue. I had these cool kind of glittery tiles and I'm going to glue them around the back feet and the front feet. I'm just going to add them whichever way I think they'll look nice. And then lastly, we need to get those whiskers in place. So if you've never made whiskers for an art doll before, I find that fishing line is really useful for this. Um, it's nice and translucent and looks really cool. Plus you can paint it, it's just a little bit time consuming because you've got to paint it and then resin over it and stuff. But yeah, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the holes drilled out for each whisker and honestly I should have done this before painting but you learn. Um, so I'm going to get those drilled and I'm just going to glue the whiskers in place. Um, what I did after I got them glued in place, I did go over the openings with a little bit more resin to help really secure them in place because sometimes the glue just won't hold all the way. Okay guys, and here is our space otter. Let me get him all in the frame. <laughs> so even though he didn't work out exactly like I wanted him to, he still came out pretty cool. And this is what I ended up doing instead of stretching. Basically his limbs can slide around going just up and down the length of the body because of that little sock thing inside of him. Again, I think I'll have plans to try and do a stretchy creature in the future, but I think it'll be something where I don't have actual stuffing in it, so I don't have to worry about lumps and just things misshaping as you stretch it. Which means it'll be a lot smaller than this dude. Anyways guys, I'm going to have my space otter on my website, so if you're interested in buying him and giving him a new home, you can check the links down below for that. I also have a ton of other dolls, and keep an eye out because I think I need to do a sale because 
my shop is really full and I'm running out of space. But yeah, depending on when this video goes out, I might have a sale currently going on or coming in the future. Oh, and while you're down there in the description, if you guys are interested in making your own art dolls, I have a bunch of different art supplies linked down below so you can check it out, see what I like using and stuff like that. Now these are affiliated links, so it does help support the channel if you buy anything through them. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Even though he doesn't stretch, he's still really long. He'd be like three times this length though if he did. Oh, we'll figure it out. Bye!